that. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking at different concoctions, but what I want to do is I want some old school ass punch. Because I'm not a lush. I, I'm not one that really, you know, tie one on and all that. I'm not really that motherfucker. I mean, I just started smoking weed, and I'm not really good at that. I don't really know how to huff it right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to really get it right. So I'm not that good at that shit. But I do want something to have a little head change. I do want a little, woo-hoo, one of them, you know. So um, what I'm going to do is I want to go buy me a nice, uh, I don't want the punch bowl. I want the big glass with the spout at the bottom um, with the lid on the top. And I want some old school ass punch. The punch that my mama and them used to get down with when they was having their big wish parties and shit at the house. You know what I'm saying? Because my mama didn't drink either. But she did spike the punch, you know, when they had their little family get down or whatever. So I want some spike punch with the um, fruit punch concentrate. And I want... Um, some pineapple juice, and I want some vodka. Yes, vodka, baby. Mama wants some vodka, and I just wanted to have it close nearby where the fuck I'm going to sit at. I, 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 I ain't trying to hate. I'm going to share with everybody. Everybody can have some, but I want that drink for me because, see, everybody else is on Patron and Cavassier and all, all this kind of stuff because my auntie done bought so much liquor and shit, and I was like, auntie, you know, you buying all this motherfucking shit. You know these niggas is raggedy. You know, I mean, I did a video about that shit before, what, about a year ago. Stop coming to motherfuckers' houses empty-handed without nothing. You don't go to nobody's fucking house and not have nothing in hand. I mean, where the fuck do you do that at? If you know your motherfucking ass smoke weed, at least come back with a knick-knack. You know what I'm saying? Have something. If you can't do nothing but go buy a nickel bag of weed, roll you up a couple of motherfucking joints and bring it to the party, and then therefore you have something to pass. You know what I mean? You don't come to a motherfucking event and don't have shit in hand, especially if it's a dinner party. I don't give a fuck if it's Aunt Bertha, Medea, Uncle Willie, or any of that. When you come to their motherfucking house for a goddamn event now, right now we're coming up on Memorial Day. A lot of motherfuckers is going to barbecues. Put that shit in your motherfucking budget right now because everybody got their motherfucking food stamps. Right now is the beginning of the month. Now here in California, you get food stamps to the night. So, I'm trying to buy some of them motherfuckers right now. I'm waiting on the phone call. But all I'm saying is to the rest of y'all motherfuckers that get them, you need to be putting some shit to the side to go head on and buy some ribs to contribute to the motherfucking party. Don't show up at that goddamn party. You know you done bought all three of your goddamn kids and you ain't bringing shit but you and your motherfucking man to the party. You don't do that. You don't do that. It's tasteless. It's ghetto fine. It's all that motherfucking shit. You better come in there with something in hand. For real. If you can't do nothing but go down there and go get a 10 piece from Church of Chicken, you come to that motherfucking event with something. You do not show up at some shit that your ass is invited to and you ain't got nothing in your motherfucking hand. <laughs> Auntie Denar told y'all. Okay? That's just tasteless. It's without etiquette. It's ghetto fine. It's all that. And you don't want to be looked upon like. Damn, she got to come, and she bringing all them goddamn kids, and a man too? Oh, damn. No, you want motherfuckers to see you coming like, hey, girl, what's up? You Girl, you need some help? You want me to help you carry that? That kind of old shit. See, they didn't even show my co-host motherfucking video. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen my shit yet, so I guess, you know, I didn't make the motherfucking cut. So, anyway, so, yeah, um, but, yeah, put that in your motherfucking budget now to go on down there and grab you a couple of slab of ribs, and now I'm going to tell you what you can do to those ribs now to make them last, okay? Go to the butcher. What you do is, ladies, when you go buy your ribs this week, and you're going to freeze them for the barbecue at the end of the month, but what you want to do is when you go buy your pork spare ribs, See, she done called somebody. I ain't getting that damn motherfucking phone call. It's cool, Wendy. I still love you, though, but goddamn. That's fucked up. Kara Woodson, but you from Mississippi. Y'all just had some shit jump down off down there. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and let you have that, Carol. 
You know what I'm saying? You look like you can be a homie of mine, so I ain't gonna say nothing. But you know, Wendy, I mean, for real, Wendy? Anywho. But yeah, let me tell you what to do with those ribs now, family. Let me tell y'all, quick little, quick little get out with the ribs. Now, you know when you buy a slab of spare ribs, I'm talking of the motherfuckers that eat pork. I don't, you know, I don't cook uh, beef ribs. I don't. They tough as a motherfucker. You got to really get them motherfuckers together like days in advance. But for pork spare ribs, and I'm sure you can do this for beef too, but beef or just shorter ribs as opposed to the pork ones. But anyway, what you want to do is on the full slab of ribs, okay, you want them cut in half lengthwise. So if the ribs is that long, you're going to cut them lengthwise this way. And then you got two pieces instead of the one. And what they look more like is baby bags. Tell me your girl don't know. They look like motherfucking baby bags. And so if you go, if you know that you got three goddamn kids and it's you and your man, okay, that's five motherfuckers, okay, you need to at the bare minimum come in with four pieces of rib. You know what I'm saying? Which means that's two slabs. But they're two slabs that's cut in half, which makes that four slabs, okay? Now, what you want to do is when you get your ribs, let me tell y'all, ladies, one little tidbit, you know what I'm saying? Because we used to have a, a, a restaurant, so I'm going to tell you what the get down is. What you do is when you get your ribs, Okay, and they're defrosted and everything. Like, say it's the day before or whatever, the day before the barbecue or whatever, whatever. What you want to do is take uh, the, especially like if you guys are cooking mass quantities. I mean, you got half the neighborhood coming and shit, and everybody's getting ready to cook some ribs. What you want to do is get one of those kitchen 10 gallon trash bags, 13 gallon trash bags, the white ones, okay? You want to, don't put nothing else on the ribs, but you want to pour some vinegar, okay? Some vinegar on them motherfucking ribs. Yeah. Now, um, you want to pour vinegar on them and let them sit overnight. Put them in the bag. Uh, tie the bag up. Or, but you know what? I take that back. You can go ahead on and put the seasoned salt and black pepper. Seasoned salt, black pepper, vinegar. Um, if you're going to use, um, if you're going to use tenderizer, always use the unseasoned tenderizer. Okay, don't use a seasoned one because it'll make your shit salty. And then put some liquid smoke, put them motherfuckers in the bag, tie the bag up, and put it in the bottom of your refrigerator and just forget about it. Vinegar, auntie, I don't know. I don't like to taste vinegar. Oh, auntie, oh no, vinegar, 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 auntie, I don't know. Well, let me tell you, what the vinegar does is it just tenderizes the meat. That's all it does. And it actually cooks away, so you don't taste the vinegar as it's cooking. The vinegar cooks away. It just goes into the meat and it tenderizes the fibers of the meat. That's all it do. Then therefore, that's how you see these motherfuckers on whatever, Tony Romas and shit like that there, and the meat is falling off the bone. They also take the sheath off the back. Like on the back of the slab of ribs, there's like a thin lining, like a sheath on the back of them. And just like you're skinning a catfish, they pull that lining because that's tough as well. So they'll skim that off and then that tenderizes the meat as well. But that just takes some time and you got to kind of know what you're doing to do that. But, excuse me. But on a quick little fix though, put your shit in the trash bag. I'm talking about a clean one, y'all. Of course, right? And then just tie the bag up, put it in the bottom of the refrigerator and then just leave it. And when, uh, when boyfriend get up early in the morning and start his barbecuing, all he got to do, the meat is already tenderized, it's already ready to go. And then you just put your meat on the pit. Simply, okay. Now Ken, Ken also puts, um, he also puts crushed pineapples on his too, and it's good as a motherfucker. He put crushed pineapples on that motherfucking meat, y'all, even on the chicken, and you know, cause we always tenderize our meat the day before and whatever, and it just you, cause you want, you want the taste to come all the way down to the motherfucking bone. You know what I'm saying? You don't want just the the the, the top layer of the shit to be seasoned. You want the shit all the way down to the motherfucking bone when you can hand that to the nine-month-old and the baby just hold the bone and just suck on it. It's just so goddamn good. Yeah. So, um, so that's a little tidbit. When you guys have your barbecues coming up and you want to get your rib right, you want to come in on some class and not show up, you know, on some ghetto-fied shit because I'm going to talk about you. 